now comes the steps in extraction now only we are jumping into it so before that you have to satisfy all this criteria then only you can learn from that experience i am not telling then you will get success i am not telling you will get success you will learn from that experience <coughs> and another thing is see one government college student is do, doing lot of extraction per day whether it's house surgeon or pg or third year whatever it is but in private colleges uh, we are doing very less number of extraction in private uh, practice it is very less how many extraction uh, you will do in a private practice right so where we have to develop our skill how to develop our skill i'm telling it is not related to the number if you do a extraction no daily ten extraction you will learn first and not like that you have to do only one extraction per day you can learn a lot from that experience even if you do 10 extraction per day you can you won't learn anything if you do not yes. know put focus i'm seeing government college they are doing lot of impaction but in private college the student will be doing only one impaction per day but he will do in a very nice way than a government college in a very decent way gentler way softer way will do because he is very much focused on that one case and he will be reviewing that case again what mistake i did what learnings i have to get from this one. even if he gets one chance to observe he won't miss it okay so nare case panada experience varum it's not like that the less number of cases also gives you lot of experience <coughs> provided you put your mind focus everything into it if you don't put a focus no into it there is no use in doing so many cases okay so steps in extraction now we are jumping okay so the first step is gum elevation right any any given any given one patient is waiting now it is coming again it's called praying motion like this better to see this is first premolar sorry molar this is 5 6 so this is papilla right this is papilla this papilla also we have to elevate or not yes better to elevate then only you can put the forceps so some people they leave the papilla free they won't elevate the papilla better to elevate this papilla also and this papilla also start from uh, there is still of five praying motion Anyway. Only once you have to travel like this. I have seen no students. They will be doing ten times from here to here, here to here, here to here. <laughs> in the initial learning stage that is okay. But ten times learning you are doing in single case. <laughs> <laughs> Then lingually. When you do lingually, will be tiring. Will be may, uh, taking time, some time, or you won't do properly, and you will be thinking, no, I have elevated. because you are not having access just till the patient like this till like this you will see the lingual gingiva very clearly and just go like this and one shot if you don't do this no you won't know whether you are tearing the gums or you are okay having a sharp elevator is a must the tip should be sharp otherwise it will, it won't go inside it will tear sir 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 okay so how to find the elevator good elevator so it is like you know well right this much sharp it will be sharp it should be like this slight rounded here okay but when you see no thickness wise it should be it will be sharp here and when you see from this side it will be <coughs> little curvature should be there 
then only you can approach easily if it is straight no the curvature should be there sometimes when you used to uh, many times no it the curvature will become it will bend okay okay so the tip should be sharp but if it is too sharp after one or two use it will bend it will bend here so the tip should be uh, sharp but it should not bend it should it should be strong material so good quality that is how you find it so how to find out you have to buy and check it buy one company and if it is not bending it is working nice you buy the same thing. okay that is how you buy Hmm? See, this is a very beautiful elevator, curious elevator. Okay, the middle part should be thick. This is a tip. This is the neck, right? The middle part should be thick because it is not going. We are not going to insert till that part. Only the apical, no, uh, tip, three mm, four mm is very important. This is good elevator. Okay. Otherwise, what you can do if it is not sharp, this part you can. Use the sandpaper to make it sharp. Okay. It's a very old instrument, but still okay. The tip is a little burnt. <coughs> okay. 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 going to extract uh, six okay so after the elevation you can apply the forceps or you can do one uh, small thing you can use this periotome just mildly luxate the uh, interdental spaces without giving too much force to the uh, adjacent tooth okay this you can do optional if you have periotome and another thing is if you are having a piezotome okay in the piece of them, there are two tips are mainly used. Right. This is one tip. Okay. So keep this tip in the alveolar crest. It will remove 0.5 to 1 mm and it will create you know crater kind of thing, buckley and lingually. Okay. And there is one more tip, sharp tip. If you see from here, to be like this. Like per like per like periodo, this is piezo. Okay, so just like this. In road, no, they will be doing one drill. Will go go inside. No? Uh, so the same way, you punch, 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 punch wherever possible, lingually. Okay, then it is easy to remove. It. Okay, so these are the two steps in piezo. If you are using piezo, these are the two things. In this tip, there are two thickness are there with. One is uh, three mm, another one is five mm. I guess, right? Mm. That you can use. If it is a premolar tooth, you can use the small piezo. If it is a molar, you can use this. If no, if uh, no, no. the root stump is there, you have to use this piezo tone. One dip, one dip, one dip, one dip, one dip, like this. Then it will exit. Then it is easy to remove it, right? Elevator. That is all. Okay. But you, you have to use only in the dipping motion. You should not use it as an elevator. You should not use it to remove the tooth. It is just mm -hmm. to widen the prodont ligament space. That's it. Then you have to use the forceps. Luxator. Okay. Hmm? Oh, you can use the luxator. You can use elevator or luxator here, but you have to be very careful not to. Uh, that is why whenever you are going to remove only one tooth, it becomes difficult. 
because you cannot uh, you should not you uh, know touch or exit the adjacent tooth the more number of tooth you are uh, removing the more the procedure becomes easy if it is a full mouth extraction it is extremely easy okay what we did yesterday for full mouth extraction right we elevated from right to left then we used a regular perius elevator to create mild luxation on all the internal spaces then we used the straight elevator or coupland elevator to luxate all the strobis technique right strobis technique there only it is in jeffrey gold strobi technique when you are removing teeth in your row then you can use this technique you can use elevator and just uh, rotate and luxate you can give forces to both 6 and 7 you can give force to both 6 and 7 But if you are going to remove only six, then you need to be very careful. It is becomes challenging. Okay. Removing eight means. Ah, yes. Okay. So when it comes to forceps, the forceps has got uh, handle, a hinge, and beaks. Yes. Okay. The you have to check first this one. There should not be any movement between these two arms. Okay. See here. See so much of looseness here. But if you see here, there is no such movement. Three there. There is looseness. So that is the main thing. First, we have to check. Then it cannot. Uh, you cannot uh, have a good grip. When buying itself, you have to check this. Okay. Then the beaks. The more important part is the beaks. Okay. So in the handle, similar to your finger impression, no, it is that. So that to catch hold of it. And you see a straight. Curve here, right? The forceps is straight curve. But if you see this one, it is straight. Upper anterior forceps it is straight. Why there is a curvature here? If it is straight, if you are applying for forceps, mm -hmm. if it is straight, mm -hmm. this will interfere with the lower teeth and lips. So to avoid the lips, lower lips and teeth, there is a curvature here. Okay, that is why eight. There is a severe curvature okay so this curvature that is a principle but when it is a straight anterior forceps so we all know this is straight to the uh, beak long axis is straight uh, similar uh, parallel to the uh, handle long axis you can do like this when you are using this curved one the tooth long axis should be parallel to this one or this one we get a confusion This is where we uh, do some mistakes. Okay, I'll explain that. Imagine upper molar. Okay, six. Okay. So the force of beaks should be parallel to the tooth. long axis of the tooth, not the handle. Okay, this is the first main rule. The long axis of the crown should be parallel to the. It should match the long axis of the uh, beaks. If it is slightly mesial or distal, your forces won't go properly to the tooth. You are plucking a plant now from the earth. How, how are you going to pluck the plant? You are holding the plant itself and you are plucking. You are using the plant itself to pluck it from the earth. So how we remove this tooth is not by using forceps. By using tooth itself, we are removing the tooth. We are using the tooth to luxate the socket. The tooth itself luxates, luxates its own socket. For that, we are using forceps. Actually, the forceps is not removing the tooth. Okay, the tooth itself itself is removing the tooth. If you understand this, then you will. Okay, so keep finger over the uh, buccal and palatal aspect, your left hand. How to use the left hand? There is one page in Jeffrey Hubbard. How to use the left hand properly? So what is the use of left hand to retract first to retract the? See, imagine I am using, I am um, extracting one six. 
I'm retracting the buckle, right? I'm retracting the lip and cheek, okay? And I'm holding the, uh, stabilize the head, otherwise the patient head will move like this, okay? I'm supporting the jaw and I'm feeling the expansion of the bone in. In the initial days when doctors do extraction, they, they don't focus on these things. You have to focus on your feeling of the these two fingers, especially the buckle finger. You will feel the tooth is moving, the bone is expanding. Are you feeling that? You have to feel that. Okay. So the left hand is to retract the soft tissues to support the jaws and to feel the expansion, alveolar expansion. 